you do the sport because you love it. Strongman is life for me, man. I just love to train, man. That's, that's the pure honest, you know. I like to train. That's, this is the best job ever for me. My whole life revolves around strongman. Absolutely everything I do, you know. Strongman's kind of made me believe I'm more than just another number. You know, it's a legacy I'm trying to create for my family and it's, it is everything at the moment. It's a sport like no others and, you know, everyone respects what you do and everyone knows, like, everyone cheers for you. You know, when I do the world record stone, I had loads of people cheering for me, even if it was people that I was against. For many people who've been following the Mulligan Brothers, you may be aware that we're also working with the Stoltman Brothers on a feature length documentary. We've followed the Stoltmans for the last three years, talking about their mindset, their training, everything that went in to becoming the world's strongest man. So today we share that message from Tom and Luke Stoltman, but also Adam Bishop, Hathjord Bjornsson, and we talk about what it is to be a strong man, what it takes, what sacrifice is needed. These lessons from these men who have dedicated their whole lives to becoming the strongest men on planet Earth can be applied to anything, from football, to basketball, to business, to entrepreneurship. The dedication, the sacrifice that it takes to do this is applicable to everybody. Today's video is sponsored by Mullingbrush.com where you can now get the Not A Journal, a journal that I designed seven years ago and served me so well that I decided to share it with you guys. It's a get, sh get shit done on one side, notes on the other side, and it's about taking souls every single day, writing a list and just getting it done. Uh, we have the weekly goals, the monthly goals and the yearly goals that we affirm every single day. So when we put these, this list down and we go to start our day, we know exactly what we're working towards. These, the feedback we've had from these have been amazing and they are selling fast at the moment. I think a lot of people are trying to get ready for 2023. So follow the link in the description. They are available while our stocks last and thank you to everybody who supported us on the website where all the profits go back into creating this content. But before that, what does it take to be at the top level of a sport? What does it take to be the strongest man on planet Earth? And how can we take those lessons and drop them into entrepreneurship, into business, into other sports. Trust me, these lessons are applicable to all. Let's dive into the video. World's Strongest Man, the title is, is like, you know, the gold, the gold medal at the Olympics for the 100 meters. You know, it's like lifting the World Cup in football. It's like lifting the Super Bowl in American football. You know, it's, it's the pinnacle of our sport. And to be able to call yourself the undisputed World's Strongest Man is, is everything for strength, strength athletes, you know. Even guys who compete in weightlifting and, and powerlifting, you know, they still, still kind of look at that World's Strongest Man title uh, and wish it was them, you know, and that's, that's a big thing. Uh, and it's not, just, it's not just the kind of like kudos that comes with it, it's more the sense of achievement that, that how many years you've put in, because, you know, strength doesn't come easy. You know, it, it takes a long, long time to develop. It costs a lot of money to develop if you can account for all the food we have to eat and the hard times you have to endure and, and you know, it's more of a, I see it as more of a uh, getting that world strongest man title is like a um, a realization of all your hard work and, and, and effort over the years. What more of a title do you want? Like, uh, like someone could say, "Oh, I, I knew a guy that's strong." I went, oh, well, that's nice. I'm the strongest man in the world. And what? <laughs> you know, it's like being able to say that you've done that feat that so many people would love to be able to say that, that they are the strongest man in the world and for us to be able to say that we are the strongest brother ever lived and the two strongest men on the planet. That's it, mic drop. There's a lot of guys competing every year, 25 to 30 guys compete for that title um, and it's the, the ultimate goal, it's what we're all, all fighting for, trying to climb over each other to, to achieve, you know. It's all friendly backstage, but ultimately we want to win that title. I just love to train, man. That's, that's the pure honest, you know. I like to train. That's, this is the best job ever for me to be able to come here in my own gym, smashing the weights four times a week or more often, you know. For me, it's the best job ever, you know. I wouldn't change, change a thing. You do the sport because you love it. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do the sport till I love it. And when the day I fall out of love of it, well, the, the day I stop and... I'm just gonna do this, like I said, 
uh, breaking records and winning the big titles gives me motivation, massive motivation. I didn't think it would give me, like, breaking the first stone record, I thought, oh, it's only going to give me a wee bit of a buzz, but yeah, that was like, I want to keep going. Like, I'm already planning a 350, 360, you know, stone lift, so like, I'm always wanting to, I want that stone record to be, like, no one can touch it, like the kind of big Z, you know, he had his log record for, he has it for numbers and numbers of years, so, yeah, I just going to keep, if I win five World Strongest Man and still love the sport, I'll keep going, but, you know, I love training, I love the kind of competition, I love meeting the people I'm training, uh, competing with, but the day I fall out in love with it will be the day I stop, but if that means I've won five Strongest Man titles, then I'll do it, but it's just the, uh, I think it's just a buzz and, you know, it's a sport like no others and, you know, everyone respects what you do and everyone knows, like, everyone cheers for you. You know, like when I do the World Record Stone, I had loads of people cheering for me, even if it was people that I was against in the Stone. You know, they were coming up going, oh, wow, you know, it's amazing. Same with, like, you know, logs, it's deadlifts. It's, everyone just wants you to do well and that's why I love it as well, you know. They're not just, there's no, like, hate. It's all a big family and that's why it's, like, such a good, good sport. And, why I want to do it and be like the greatest. Strongman is life for me, man. It's, it's um, without, I said before in something, you know, like Strongman's kind of made me believe I'm more than just another number. You know, it's like being in that, working uh, for someone else, you know, you're just a number to that company. But because of Strongman, I'm, I'm more than a number. I'm, I'm Luke Stoltman professional strongman, one of the strongest men in the world. So that's something that I can, you know, it's a legacy I'm trying to create for my family and it's, it is everything at the moment and it's, it's something that it's, I've never thought possible. I mean, cut 10 years ago when I, I started kind of doing it, started kind of, you know, getting into it. I didn't ever think that I'd have my own gym, I'd be competing all over the world with my brother, um, making money from it been successful at it. I would never have thought that. I was just some um, I was just some daft Highlander, you know, going to these competitions that like to have fun. But cut again ten years later, who knows this year, you know, it might be a one two stolen at the world's strongest man. That's the that's the goal. In terms of like sacrifices, what has it taken? Oh it's a huge huge amount of sacrifice. I'm I'm an incredibly selfish person. I know that. I don't speak to my university friends or my other friends outside of Strongman as much as I should. Um, I'm very lucky that my partner Amy is, is nearly as selfish as I am. Uh, she's focused on her business, she's focused on uh, her triathlon, she does Ironmans, so she's also, she knows what it's like um, and it's important that I have someone who understands what it takes to compete at the high level because otherwise, I mean, there'd be, there wouldn't be in a relationship, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not social, I'm with my friends, I'm not drinking at the weekend. I'm not skipping meals. Um, if I have to go out somewhere, I have to plan ahead to make sure I'm taking food with me and, and know when I'm gonna be able to train and, and do all these things. Um, I'm terrible with like keeping in touch with people uh, just because I'm always training and I'm always just focused on those events. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a nightmare to plan holidays with as well. Because Amy will try and book us on a holiday and I'm like, nah, I'm sorry, you know, we don't know when Worlds is yet. So we can't book anything until we know. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of sacrifice and I'm very fortunate I've got someone in, in the house with me who, who understands that. Yeah, well, like, you're sacrificing a lot of time with your, you know, your wife. And, I mean, since I own a gym now as well, like, I'm 80% of the time hardly see her, you know, it's kind of... Luckily, she understands, you know, you're, I hardly see a lot of my family. I mean, me and Luke are lucky we travel together, so he's kind of the only family member I kind of see. Uh, and the rest are maybe like once a week, sometimes even once a month. So yeah, it's a lot of kind of sacrifice. It's, uh, you know, you, you want to go out and have fun with your friends. You know, that's kind of, I'm only 25, 20, uh, 26, sorry. And, you know, to miss kind of those kind of times with, you know, memories with mates that you can't get back. It's kind of like, you know, they're all kind of having good times. You see pictures, you're like sitting there eating chicken and rice and you're like, well, I could be with these guys, but then, What's motivating is, you know, I'll be world's strongest man and they won't and I'll have something to kind of show my grandkids, show my ch like children, so that's kind of, I mean, there's a massive sacrifice and if, like, if you're not mentally into the game, you can't do it because like, that's what I struggled with at first, the sacrifice was crazy, I mean, 
uh, I loved just, you know, just hanging out with my friends and I just stopped doing that, just literally gave up everything I did in my life and, you know, was a full-time strongman and 24-7 is, it's hard to always, even trying to switch off, you know, I'm trying to, at night, even trying to get an hour by yourself, you know, it's even, it's hard because you've got, you know, you, I've got pets, you know, you might have kids, there's always stress on your mind, so yeah, it's, <laughs> sacrifice is massive, you know, and it's, it's a hard one because obviously, like, you want to spend time with your family, you know, like, dad's not going to be around long, I've got nieces and nephews and, you know, if you're only seeing them once, twice a month, it's kind of like, you talk to this question yourself, is it worth it? But like, in the long run, they know it's worth it and they know they're going to see me be on top. So yeah, it's a lot, a lot of sacrifice. Like. If someone in, 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 in invites me to a party or a drink out late in the next 16 weeks, do you think I'm going to go out? No, hell no. There's no fucking way. Like, if someone would ask me, bro, we're going out for a drink, you want to come? I was like, are you serious? I had no way. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to eat my steak in the morning. You know, it doesn't even, I don't even have to think about it in my mind. I'm that dedicated. Obviously, like, with Strawman, you know, you're away from family, you know, you have to kind of sacrifice a lot of things. And in my eyes, Strawman's probably one of the toughest mentally, like, on your mental, you know, you have to be mentally and physically strong. I think it's one of the toughest sports you can do. And, for me, having Asperger's, you know, and autism, and you know, telling, putting it out there that like people with this disability can do stuff, you know, and it's just a label. And the amount of people I've kind of helped to say like, oh, you know, they can, they want to be the next Tom Stoughton because uh, it's just unbelievable, you know. And that's what I want to keep doing. And it's, it's just, uh, yeah, putting yourself in situations that you never thought you could handle is a great feeling as well, you know, because. Like I've been in a situation in Strawman where Luke's not been there, you know, I have to get out of it myself. Uh, and it's just, I can now do that, you know, whereas I didn't ever be able to do that without anybody around me, so, yeah, it's a great feeling. Would you call it an obsession? Yeah. Yeah, 100% it's an obsession. My whole life revolves around Strongman. Absolutely everything I do, you know, to the point where when I'm moving house, I'm picking out a house that is going to be able to put a gym in, that I can train. Who does that? Like, people look at, like, schools or what the neighbourhood's like. I was just looking at a space with a double garage so I could put a gym in, you know? And everything in terms of, you know, all my purchases and stuff, you know, is, is always focused towards strongman. I don't, don't go out and party, I don't buy, I don't play computer games. It's all everything towards being the best at my sport. I'm going to be obsessed, completely obsessed with everything that concerns getting better. I, I would do anything possible to recover as fast as possible so I could even train more often. That's my goal. Because why, why is that? Because the more you can train, the better you get. If I can train half, if I can train more than that guy, then I most likely on the long, 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 long term will get much better than him. So I have everything planned out, my diet, my sleep, my recovery, my training. And, you know, I have this, um, plan right now where I train for two days, I rest, I train two days, I rest, and if my body is feeling fresh, I just keep doing that. But if my body feels beating up, I take an extra day off. So it's also about listening to your body and knowing when to take a small step back, but also knowing when to step in. You know, everyone responds different to training. Everyone is different, you know. I might be able to train more than the next guy. I've had many training partners and a lot of them have got injured because they didn't handle the pressure that I, I was able to go through. Um, why is that? I don't know, maybe something I did out, out of the gym that they didn't do that, that was helping me more than them. So saying this earlier, so I like to come in and train by, by myself. It's like a meditation almost. You know, you're not really worried about anything. You know, it's like a release. It's like a, 
I don't know, it's, it's, you kind of leave all your problems away and just kind of come in and you're striving for that perfect lift. Do you know, it's like, it's almost like, so for me with the log press, it's, everything's got to be so, the clean, the, the kind of the clean motion's got to be perfect. It's got to sit perfectly on your shoulders. You've got to pop it perfectly. And there's so many elements that, you know, everything has to go right to make it happen. So sometimes I prefer to be in by myself because there's no distractions, there's no one else. It's just, it's just me, you know, and it's something that I love to do. I get such a buzz from being in that gym by myself. When I have a good lift, phone up my wife. Yeah, smashed it, did this, it's going to be a good night. Same, had a bad lift, all right, okay, it's going to be a shit night. You know, it, it, you kind of get the vibe for it. So it's um, just a way of, yeah, really <sighs> releasing all that kind of energy, all that kind of, you know, if you've got any bad feelings, kind of anxiety or stuff, it's just almost like that kind of zen moment that you have before that lift. Like, you've put so much into it, and it is, it's so much kind of effort you've put into it, and it's, when it goes right, you're just so elated. It's like the best feeling. <laughs> you know, obviously people get addicted to drugs and stuff, but when you're hitting those lifts, I think that's probably the best feeling because it's only you that's doing it. You know, you don't, okay, you've got coaches, nutritionists and stuff, but only you can do that lift. And if you've done everything right and it's that perfect lift and you nail it, it's like, fuck, that's like, boom, that's my high, like that's my, uh, all the endorphins and everything going and I'm just buzzing. It takes me so long to come down then because the adrenaline's going and like, I'll be up till three o'clock in the morning kind of buzzing and it's like just, pff, I'm getting tingles just fucking thinking about it now man. It's, <laughs> it's good man, it's such a good feeling, positive, just such a, an amazing kind of feeling to experience. Just the eating thing, we were talking about eating. Mm. Um, would you just talk us through, sort of, like getting to the point where you are force feeding it, like that sort of, like where that dedication comes into it as well? I guess this is, this is where I probably kind of connect to a lot more of the public than, than some of the strongmen out there. Um, I think of myself as a normal guy, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not six foot eight, you know, I'm not naturally walking around at 400 pounds. Uh, if I didn't force feed, I'd probably drop back to kind of 17 stone, uh, you know, maybe like 110 kilos, something like that. Um, but you know, I, I have to kind of work hard uh, on all my training and my nutrition, and to the point where, yeah, my last meal that I'm kind of putting in, I'm just sitting there for ages trying to force force it down to make sure I get every last bit of nutrition I can to make sure I'm pushing my body weight up so that I'm competitive on certain events. You know, it's it's hugely important. And if I skip a meal, I'll lose weight. I know that, and I think that, so I make sure I never skip a meal, uh, whether that's you know just a quick shake or whether it's a, a full sit down kind of steak rice, veg, you know, it, it, I try and make sure I never never miss those meals because I know it's going to impact me down the line. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not fun and once again I'm fortunate that my partner Amy kind of understands that and she can just go off and clean the kitchen and stuff while I'm just sitting there trying to chow down my last meal at like nine o'clock. My diet is just Nathan uh, Payton, pro body coach on Instagram, so basically I went with him, you know, just to kind of get a bit more body weight and stuff on and kind of see what it is like to be a, eat seriously, you know, because I, when I had a, my old dietitian, I was eating, but I wasn't eating like these guys. So yeah, I went with these and now it's kind of monstrous food, you know, food that I never thought I would be able to like consume. It's like 10, 11 eggs in the morning with 100 grams of oats, 500 grams of yogurt for a snack, plus a whole pan of strawberries or grapes. So that, that's two meals in and that's already like, double what I used to eat, and then lunch could be anything from 340 grams of chicken, 300 steak, uh, steak burgers, with two potatoes, veg, and then the best meal is the one before the gym. I always usually have a cheat meal, so it's like double burger chips, macaroni, whatever kind of I feel like, or whatever he says for me to eat, I'll do it. Then after the gym, it's kind of like protein shake and donuts, and then another meal, so yeah, it's, I thought I was eating a lot until I signed up with this guy, and this guy's like, this is only a phase three, you know, so I've still got four, five, six, so yeah, this is serious food already, so. Most of my meals are around 1,000 calories. So, you know, at the moment, I'm having kind of just under 7,000, 6,800 calories at the moment. Uh, so if I suddenly drop to 5,800, it's huge. And we couldn't work, myself and my um, nutritionist, we couldn't work out why that was. 
Um, so we actually got my kind of basal metabolic rate tested. Um, so it's we basically got, I got hooked up to a spirometer and I stayed perfectly still and they measured how many calories I'll burn in a day if I just stay completely still. So this is just to, without any exercise or anything like that, it turns out I'll burn 2,803 calories if I stay still. So every time I'm eating, I've got to get to that level first and then I've got to eat the calories that I burn off from moving uh, and then I've got to be, uh, eat the calories that are actually then going to grow the muscle. So it's, it's a constant battle with food trying to make sure you know that I get the calories in and when you're having kind of a thousand calorie meals you miss one that's a huge that's a sixth of your diet gone suddenly you're going to be dropping weight you know I'm not gonna lie so some days I would get, get up and I'm like another 10 eggs you know I can't be bothered doing this or um like chicken you know I I've even got bored of chicken I don't think I've ate chicken for about two three weeks you know it's just getting too hard to get down you know chicken every day is like you know geez you know? so yeah it's a uh, diet I think is uh, one thing that a lot of people will kind of fail if they do the sport. It's kind of training can be off a wee bit, but for me, it's if training's off and your diet's perfect, you're going to still counterbalance it. So, but I think if it's the other way around, you'll feel, feel depleted in the gym if you miss a meal. Like if I miss a meal or under eat, uh, there's no way I'm lifting as much as I usually do. Like I can feel it as soon as I walk into the gym, you know. So, thank you to Tom, thank you to Luke, thank you to Adam, and thank you to Hathor. Um, I wanted to say a massive shout out to Stoltman Brothers documentary page. Uh, it's a page that we run. We are just about to start uploading more content on there at the moment. But this project has been our blood, our sweat, our tears. At Mulligan Brothers, everything that we have done is for this documentary. And you may have seen the YouTube channel and the content that we, that we produce. And we're really excited for when, when the Stoltman documentary, um, when they're both filmed, we will eventually be working more on Mulligan Rivers content and we're excited for you guys to see that. We have some huge plans, but everything has kind of been geared towards getting this documentary done. This is our life goal. This is what we wanted to achieve. This is our world's strongest man to get this documentary done. And the support that we've had from the Stoltman Brothers fans and the Mulligan Brothers fans has been amazing. If you want to show us some more love, get some Mulligan Brothers guys over there, some of the Mulligan Brothers family, go onto the Stoltman page, see what we're working on, say hello, and keep your eyes peeled over the next few months for this documentary, for the trailers coming out, the content that's coming out, and eventually the film. This film is one of the biggest inspirations, and for me is the most inspirational documentary that I have ever seen, and that's what I'm excited to show you guys. We are still in the editing stages, but the story of Tom and Luke is, it says it all. When we started with Tom and Luke, they, they gave us a promise that they would eventually win World's Strongest Man, that they would eventually be the number one and number two strongest man on planet Earth. It was a verbal promise and a handshake. We promised them that we would commit to filming them for the three years and give it our absolute all. And we both sat down, all four of us, all five of us with Luke, and we shook hands and they fulfilled it. And now it's our time to fulfill it. And we hope that you guys can see uh, uh, what we've produced, and it helps inspire change around the world as always. That's what it's all about. And this is just the ways in which we're trying to deliver that inspire change message. Expect more documentaries, guys, because our promise is to become the biggest documentary producers in the world and to inspire change for our films. And again, cannot thank you enough. This was just an opportunity for me to talk about the film. So thank you to everybody who has watched up until this point. Um, we're so excited about it. And yeah, we cannot thank you enough. And also everybody who subscribes to the Mulligan Rivers YouTube channel who's waiting for more Mulligan Rivers content as well. Thank you to you guys who have supported us. We have some amazing projects to finish off the end of the year. Uh, luckily, the strongman season is quiet right now. So we are heading off around the world to film the last few projects for Mulligan Rivers. And we have a huge, huge announcement coming of an interview that we're doing you guys are gonna absolutely love it so thank you to everybody and with that all of it was made possible with mulligan where you can now get the not a journal this journal i had used for this the way i do my journal and i'd used for seven years and it led to so much success it helped build this company it helped my brothers build the company um, and their brands that we created and it's basically a no bullshit approach to journaling. Like journals have been so complicated 
I don't know why they've got more complicated and more complicated. And that seems to be the selling point nowadays. Um, and I never got on with them. So basically on one side, you write the list of the things that you want to get done. You've got the notes beside it so you can do appointments and all that kind of stuff. You've got a date where you can circle the date. It, it's not dated, so you can do, write in whatever date. You can buy this in July if you want to. You can buy it in January. And then every single day, you, you do your weekly goal, your monthly goal, your yearly goal. And you affirm that every single day so that you know as you go through your day what you're working towards. Um, and for me, that has always worked. There's only a limited quantity left. People seem to be buying them like crazy at the moment, getting ready for 2023. So once they are gone, they are gone. We will restock next year. Uh, but anyone who's bought one, thank you so much. Anyone who's been on the website to buy the hoodies, the t-shirts, all of that helps support this content. The profits all go back into making this content possible. So thank you so much. Uh, go follow me on Instagram, become a YouTube member, all that good stuff, say hello. But have a blessed and productive day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.